I think I found one of the more beautiful spots here in Minnesota this week. It is too bad that people have absolutely destroyed it. Check this out. I got walking by the woods and I'm noticing that toilet paper scattered everywhere. But unfortunately, who was ever here last couldn't even make it to the woods because they just did their business right next to the fire ring. Just disgusting. So right now we're on a recreation area and on a beautiful lake. This would have been an awesome spot, but there's just no way I'm gonna stay here. Trash everywhere. Initially, I thought that maybe I could clean the place up a little bit, haul some of this stuff back home, burn what I could, but unfortunately, there's just too much. Looks like maybe someone was remodeling an RV out here because there's old RV plumbing and plastic pieces and car parts and wheels, tires, and it's a mess. I think who was ever here in this spot probably just left because there's a paper bag, some cardboard boxes that still look fresh, and it snowed about two inches last night. Uh, I'm still finding a place to camp out here this weekend. It's just not going to be this spot. And then tomorrow morning we're going to get up and check out a place called Milford Mine. There's a memorial real close by where 41 men lost their lives in a mine collapse. Looks like the weather is going to start turning south. Let's get on the road and see what else we can find. So I drove around the forest, found a few more spots, and then I came across State Park. So we're going to drive through here and see what this looks like, and I don't know if I would stay in a state park, though. I don't really want to pay any money. Looks like they got electric sites for 34 bucks and non-electric for 24 That's out of my price range. Let's go take a look and see what these sites look like, though. The state park's just not my thing, so we gotta get back in the woods, find a spot. I gotta not be so picky. I think I can still find a place that's on the water, hopefully find a place that I don't have toilet paper everywhere, and uh, get to making supper. Found a spot right on a lake. Let's get out and see what it looks like. So this is the road that continues down from where I'm set up. Gets a little sketchy back there, so I don't think I'll see a whole lot of traffic. But I am right on this trail. It's all right though, I think it's more of just kind of a four-wheeler trail. There is a little fire ring right here, and I am right on the water. You guys see what I saw? There is another spot down there. The road looks a little sketchy, but it's nothing that I haven't done before. So the spot looks a little bit bigger and we're not gonna be right on the road. And it kind of looks like a dead ends down there. It's more of just four wheeler trails. Let's see if we can get down there. I think this one's the winner right here. We'll stay here for the night. I like this place. So far, it's not finding it to be really dirty. It 
take that back. Wow. So you got door skins, a grill, multiple mattresses, multiple mattresses. It's like maybe a hide a bed. DVD player. All right. The only good news is, is at least someone's been picking it up and throwing it in a hole over here. One thing I've noticed is that they put carpet all over out here. These trails, someone's put carpet down. No offense to the locals out here or anything, but this has got to be one of the more sketchier woods that I've ever been in. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Absolutely gorgeous. Pretty darn sketchy though. It's getting late. I totally forgot to take the steak out of the fridge. And I like to bring them up to about room temperature before I put them on the grill. Let me show you how I do it. So I picked up this porterhouse at the grocery store in Crosby. This thing weighs 1.65 pounds. It was 15 bucks. This is huge. I feel like it's my lucky day. This is how I prep my steaks. Really simple. Salt and pepper, that's it. And then I'm gonna let it sit out on the counter for probably about two hours. Bring it up to room temperature. That's it, perfect steak right there. I'm starting to get hungry, so I'm gonna go put that steak on. So normally I would just do three minutes per side on the steak. I have the grill set at about 600 degrees. This one's a little bit thicker, so I'll probably give it another minute. What I do then is I'll turn it 90 degrees to get those cross hatches on there. And then it looks delicious too. One more trick up my sleeve. And the reason for the egg is because I actually like to dip the steak right in the egg yolk. Awesome supper. That's protein. Well, I'm just about ready to call it a night. I gotta go outside though, shut the generator off for one reason or another, my remote's not working. Let's go outside, take a look at it and show you guys how dark it is. I mean, you can't see in front of your face out here. See what I'm saying? I mean, it is dark, dark out here. I'll be honest with you, I don't get the creeps too often, but this place up here just gives me the creeps. I don't know why. bet someone's down on that peninsula so I've been up editing some of this video to try and get out to you guys on Tuesday right away and uh, I think I'm gonna call it a night so I'll see you guys in the morning
stayed nice and warm in the camper last night. Got down to about 30 degrees. It's about 33 degrees out now and I checked the weather channel. They're not forecasting any snow or rain this afternoon, which is awesome. So we're gonna get heading out. From here, we're gonna go to the Milford Mine Memorial. And this is a memorial dedicated to 41 miners that lost their lives in one of Minnesota's worst mining disasters back in the 1920s. a bit nippy out this morning. I will say this was a quiet campground, quieter than I thought. I was expecting there to be more people out here seeing how much trash there is, but it was pretty quiet. Last night though, at about 2 a.m., someone was tearing around on an ATV on that main road, which makes me happy that I'm glad I moved back here because it was really close to where I parked initially. I don't know what someone would be doing on an ATV at 2 a.m. My dad used to say, nothing good happens at 2 a.m. We gotta get back on the road. It's so fun driving these old mining roads. I mean, they're not maintained at all, but they're still a blast. All the lakes left behind from when they were digging the mines, and then the huge piles of overburden. Looks like mountains back here. It's just gorgeous. We're near the town of Cayuna right now, and I'm hoping that this memorial is closed to hunting. I didn't bring any blaze orange with, so fingers crossed that uh, there's nobody out here bird hunting. Prior to entering, they have a really big parking lot here. Well, I think a person could overnight here. You might get a sheriff's deputy rolling through it, telling you that uh, there's an ordinance on city parks, but otherwise, this would have been a really good place to stay last night. Crowing County has put a memorial here for these guys and I thought that I would bring you here and we could check it out. The Milford Mine operated at this location from 1918 to 1932. The mine's ore here is a superior grade because it contains magnesium, which is used in the production of hard, durable steel. In 1924, over 100 people worked at the Milford Mine, with two shifts working around the clock. One of the challenges of mining on the Cuyuna Range resulted from the many wetlands and lakes in the region. Water seeped into the mine, so pumps ran continuously. The Milford Mine is definitely no exception to these conditions. On February 5, 1924, 48 miners were working below. About 15 minutes before the end of the day shift, water and mud started flooding into the mine at such a rapid rate that all the mining levels and 200-foot shaft filled within 15 minutes. Only seven of the 48 miners made it to the surface, and still today, it's the worst mining disaster in Minnesota history. There used to be a large lumber frame structure standing here over the pit, and that was called the head frame. I shot one of those in a video where I was out in Wisconsin last year. 
I keep seeing stuff move out of the corner of my eyes. I'm telling you, do you think about what's happened here? And how could you not get just a little spooked? Unfortunately, I can't put the drone up because this is a park surrounding this mine. But what we can do is take a walk around and look at what used to be a small little community right here. And this is where the miners at the beginning of their work shift would hang their regular clothing in a locker room and change into their mining clothes. At the end of their shift, their wet and dirty mining clothes were raised into the rafters on hooks. Warm air circulated through this building, dried all the clothes. We're now coming up on the engine house, and this is where they stored the miners' air compressors, hoisting engines, and other equipment. The hoisting engines is what powered the cables that led from the head frame down into the shaft. So that's what was used to carry the cars in and out of the mine. They also had pipes running all the way from the hoist house down into the mine shaft. That way the workers could use pneumatic air tools. We're gonna be coming up on the blacksmith shop and this is where a lot of the repairs for the mine equipment would have taken place. What's really neat in this place is if you look on the dirt floor, you can still see some of the coal that was here from the forges. We're gonna be coming up on the memorial wall and I'm telling you, I'm hearing voices out here. That is no lie. I don't know if there are people out in the woods hunting um, or what, but yeah, I'm hearing guys talk, that's for sure. This is a thick, thick woods too. I'm telling you, man, I keep hearing voices out here. I better see someone hunting out here is all I can say. There's gonna be the 100 year anniversary of this place in two years. I'm sure they'll put something together. This was a super cool park and it is getting chillier and chillier as the day goes on. I think as that sun comes out, the temperatures go down. guys managed to stick around with me through the whole weekend I appreciate it if you've made it to the end of the video we got this one in the bag so until next week be kind be honest we'll see you down the road Milford Lake Drive